Hello, everybody. We are here for riot. You can see we got the police tape. We got it all because in August and in the UK, we riot. Um, which is quite funny because the reason why I did this was back in day, I chose riot as the pay-per-view name because of the London riots that happened ages ago. And uh, this year, as in not 2026, 2024, um, there were riots again in the UK. Uh, it was over, I, don't know, I can't remember something, I think like some kid died because their parents went out and left the kids with the other kids and a kid died and then the, the social services took the parents away. So somewhere, somewhere in the UK, um, people just started rioting and attacking polices, polices, police and smashing cars and stuff. It was... Um, utterly ridiculous like ridiculous but hey ho um shit happens eh uh we don't care about that we're in 2026 we're uh we're here for lariat league wrestling's riot our own special kind of right the good kind of riot uh aka a wrestling event uh we're back in the south because there's no way i'm losing out on ticket sales in the north for an event like this and uh we're at the saint mary stadium so i think that's southampton i believe but it's the biggest stadium in the game in the South that can hold around 30 odd thousand people because that's how many we've managed to get. We are in the pre-show. We've got one pre-show match that wasn't announced. Um, I kind of just wanted to throw a bunch of people on. And uh, it is a battle, a mayhem, sorry, battle royale for a PWA title match against Bobby Gunn. So William Regal comes out to announce this special last minute match, a 15 man mayhem battle royale so the way that a mayhem battle royale works if you didn't know is it's like a normal battle royale all 15 men begin at the same time but you do not throw them over the top rope instead you must make them tap or you must pin them so a slightly longer version um a good way to kind of showcase people's abilities uh, i always think that this is a better format than the over the top one but i understand that in real life the over the top one makes more sense just because it gets stuff done rather than there being enough room for people to do moves to whatever you know uh, but before this match announced bobby guns is obviously next to william regal with his title over his shoulder and he just takes the mic from william regal and just says thank you for announcing this match william i look forward to seeing who my opponent is in the coming weeks um, as you all know, the PWA Heritage Championship has a stipulation where I can choose the type of match ahead of time for my title defences. But I want to make this one a little more interesting. The winner of this 15-man Mayhem Battle Royale will be able to choose the stipulation instead of me. So... Have a little think, guys. Whoever it is out of you 15 that win, you have the power to take advantage in our match. Uh, so that is the big announcement from Bobby Guns. He's giving that power to his next opponent. Whoever wins this 15-man mayhem battle royale. A nice 87 to kick off. But remember, it's in the pre-show, so it doesn't really count towards the main show. So let's head to this one and only pre-show match. Uh, 63, didn't think it'd be good, we're kind of just using everyone up. Uh, in a pre-show match that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, of course it was. It was our little project, Anthony Agogo, that gets the win in just under 28 minutes. The other members of the Final Four were Dan Maloney, Chris Brooks and Leon Slater, with Maloney being the final elimination. Leon Slater, though, did get the most eliminations during the match, something that I didn't pick, but the game seems to be quite high on Leon Slater. Uh, so Anthony Ogogo wins, as we know. Um, so that means that Anthony Ogogo will face Bobby Guns for the PWA Heritage title, and Anthony Ogogo gets to choose the stipulation. I wonder what this former professional boxer, Olympic boxer, is going to choose. <laughs> but either way, uh, I believe that's it for the pre-show. Let's head straight into the main show. I don't have the card in front of me, so we're just gonna <clears throat> we're just gonna go in blind. I believe we open with the uh, open challenges, so let's just dive straight in and see what happens. 
Oh, actually, we open with Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay announces <coughs> that he is officially medically cleared and good timing too because he will be front row watching the finals match later on tonight to see who his next opponent will be for his king's title so will osprey is medically cleared and it is confirmed that he will be in the ring in our next episode of lariat league in london a uh, nice little 84 to kick off the show will osprey we all love will osprey um, so it's good to see that the champion is cleared just in time to find out who his next opponent is going to be. But first, I believe we have the two rounds of open challenges. And the first one is accepted by Callum Newman and a nice 80 rated match to kick off the show. Superb wrestling and good heat. But it is the madman, Madoka Kakuta, that defeats Callum Newman in just under 25 minutes with the discus lariat this is defense number one of kakuta's prince's title remember he won it at the last pay-per-view event against ricky knight jr and you know you would have thought that ricky knight would be a little bit butthurt about it but he's now in the final for the king's title tournament so it's funny how these things happen but kakuta still remains our prince's title champion you know what i mean uh, Callum Newman with excellent showing here, an 88 from Newman, an 87 from Kakuta. The match deserved better announcing. Do you know why? And I've just realised I changed, I changed the commentary for Lariat League in London, but not for events. Oh no! That means Ian Riccoboni's got the night off, and William Regal is on commentary again. We may have screwed ourselves from some crazy high ratings. Like this could have been. Uh, like an, an 89 a 90 if it wasn't for william regal on commentary oh well now we move on to the next open challenge match where of course lycos gym turn up they are they said they were gonna accept the challenge and they're midway down the ramp when suddenly colby carino's music hits and colby says the whole point of an open challenge is anyone can accept. Am I right? And William Regal's on commentary going, he's right. So Colby says, Lycos Jim, your open challenge, you've accepted it. That's fine. But I am also accepting the open challenge. And everyone's like, you can't do it on your own, mate. What are you doing? He then turns and says, Tyler Bate, I know that you're back there. I know you don't have a match tonight. And I know that this is something that you need. Will you be my tag team partner for this night's tag team title match? And there's a little bit of silence and Colby's like, come on, Tyler. I know you want to. Let's be tag team partners. And the crowd are like, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. When suddenly Tyler Bates music hits, he comes out in his gear and he's like, why not? Let's do this. Colby and Tyler shake hands, Lycos Jim aren't very happy new blood aren't happy at all either because they've now got to defend against two tag teams and the match is official it's a three-way tag team match new blood our knights champions taking on lycos gym and the new team of colby carino and tyler Bate. let's get straight into this wild open challenge 74 and in about that had great wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. It is, of course it is. It had to be the team of Colby Carino and Tyler Bate who defeat New Blood and Lycos Jim when Tyler Bate pins Lycos with the Tyler Driver 97 to become the new Knights of the Lariat League. Colby Carino, a two-time Knights champion now. Tyler Bate getting his second piece of gold in the company and this is exactly what I think Colby and Tyler needed and as they celebrate together Colby takes a little look over at Regal who gives him a little nod of approval it was like that's the kind of spirit we want in LLW uh, just looking at the numbers though Diamante got a 78 Ishin with a 71 Lycos with a 73 Lycos Jr with a 73 Lycos with an 84 Tyler with an 88 Carino with a 77 really good numbers all round of course new blood and lycos gym both have great chemistry together and i'm sure colby and tyler will grow in their chemistry as well but we have new champions tyler Bate and colby carino exactly what these two men needed 
in their LLW careers. Let's continue with the show where we have the LLW London Siren Championship. And in a bout that had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, it is a shock. Aisha Ray defeats Mesa in convincing fashion. Three falls to none. Aisha Ray decimates Mesa But remember... The LLW London Zone London Siren rules are it's a 20 minute time limit, Iron Man match, no disqualification. And if you continued reading before I stopped, Soraya Knight Jr. came in early in the match to distract May Sarah, meaning that she helped Aisha Ray to this utterly convincing win. And Aisha Ray is now our first, you could say Grand Slam Women's Champion because she's held both the Queen's and the Siren's title. But Aisha Ray is our new London Siren Champion. May Sarah's streak is over at the hands of Aisha Ray and Soraya Knight Jr. A 75 from May, a 64 from Aisha Ray. And grabbing the microphone from the side, Soraya Knight says, Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the new London Siren champion and my new best friend, Aisha Ray. So Soraya Knight said weeks ago, she's not here to make enemies anymore. She's here to make friends. And what a friend she has made in Aisha Ray, the new uh, London Siren champion. Maybe not the new champion if it wasn't for Soraya Knight, but that's what friends are for, eh? You know, you got to help each other win sometimes. Uh, so these two seem to be, I don't want to say a force to be reckoned with because it is Aisha Ray and Soraya Knight. But still, this is a pretty badass duo and an 80 rating because Soraya is amazing on the microphone. But we have now got two new champions. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Um, I think we've only got one more title match tonight because the, the final two matches on the card, um, not the final two, there's more matches on the card that we've got Phantasma and... Uh, Chaz Betts but the final two matches on the card are of course an opportunity for the King's title and the blood feud between Pac and Ashton Smith to close us uh, but let's continue with the show where whoa we're up where we've got Chaz Betts and El Hijo del Fantasma but that is not El Hijo del Fantasma it seems that he has debuted. William Regal has just received notification. He's reading from a message he has just been sent on his smartphone. El Hijo del Fantasma has undergone a new makeover and is debuting a new character. This has been approved by the LLW board. He now goes by the name of Fuego Fantasma. And he is set to take on Chaz Betts now in a way, in, in about to end the feud that they've been having, the bickering they've been having. Uh, El Hijo said that he needs to kind of return to his roots, and I guess these are his new roots? I'm not too sure. Uh, but Chaz Betts is a little bit unsettled by this new look. You know, it's quite frightening, quite a dark, sinister look from what we now know as Fuego Fantasma. Let's, uh, let's head straight into the match and see what happens. And an 85! Whoa! In a bout that had superb wrestling. And a decent reaction from the crowd. It is the new debuting, we could say, Fuego Fantasma that defeats Chaz Betts in 22 minutes with the bridging German suplex. So no new move for Fuego. Chaz Betts with an 84. Fuego Fantasma with a 91. They've got great chemistry together. So this might not be the last time they face one another. Um, but Fuego Fantasma benefited a hot new move, apparently. So it might not be his finishing move, but he debuted something special. Let me know in the comments what you think that should be, and I might add it to the game. Um, and 85, our current match of the night is Fuego Fantasma defeating Chaz Betts. And as William Regal said, you guys will have this one match and this one match alone, and this feud will be done with. And it seems like El Hijo del Fantasma is done with Chaz Betts. But is Fuego Fantasma? We'll have to wait and see. Let's continue with the show. And we head straight into our women's title match. The Queen of the Lariat League. And another 
bout of superb wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Probably our two best female wrestlers that we've ever had in LLW. Charlie Evans gets the win. She cements herself as the queen of the Lariat League by defeating former queen Rina Yamashita in their rematch with the swipe left. A 79 rating overall, amazing numbers. A 79 from Charlie Evans and 82 from Rina Yamashita. They are both definitely our queens, but there is only one queen and that is Charlie Evans. And Charlie Evans is celebrating post-match. Rina Yamashita bows, shakes her hand and says, you deserve this, you are the queen. And leaves Charlie Evans to celebrate in the ring when suddenly the lights go out very familiar music hits that we haven't heard in a very very long time it's millie mckenzie millie mckenzie makes her triumphant return after breaking her neck what over a year ago now in her queen's match against heidi katrina that had to be altered we had to call an audible millie mckenzie has returned and she celebrates with Charlie Evans. Little known fact, Millie McKenzie and Charlie Evans are a former tag team in, I believe, Pro Wrestling Eve or Progress or one of them. So they are very good friends and Millie McKenzie chooses that tonight is when she returns and celebrates with her long-term friend, Charlie Evans. But while they're celebrating, Millie's definitely got one eye on that belt that Charlie is holding above her head. So what does this mean? Does this mean that Millie is back and is Millie going straight for the Queen's title? Or has Charlie Evans just made herself a very, very good friend and ally in Millie McKenzie? I, for one, am very, very happy to see Millie back. And it literally happened a few days before this event. And I was like, she has to return. She has to debut. She is 100% medically cleared to wrestle. And announcement, Millie McKenzie will return to in-ring action this week at Lariat League in London. So both Will Ospreay and Millie McKenzie will be in action in our next Lariat League in London show. Welcome back, Millie. Welcome back. But now we continue with the show and I believe Will Ospreay is here and he will be introducing the Kings Tournament finalists with an 18-9. Will Ospreay, Mwah, you beautiful, beautiful man. So he will be announcing the the men but before a vignette is played you know showing how drew galloway and ricky knight jr made it to the finals the entrances are here will osprey is standing on watching these two men as they both kind of look osprey up and down galloway obviously a lot more sinister than ricky knight jr who has teamed with osprey in the past he was an honorary member of syndicate all those months ago um but now he's, he's on his own he's doing his thing and to be honest he's crushing it but let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into this match. I do want to preface that I couldn't decide who should win this. So I have not chosen a winner for this final match. I'm predicting it's probably going to go Drew Galloway's way, just based on pop and everything else. But the game has done stranger things. I mean, I remember when Tyler Bate defeated Ashton Smith for the Kings title. Ashton Smith won it back immediately, even though you would have thought the game would just let Tyler win. But uh, it's happened before. Crazy things have happened. So let's move on and see who wins the King's title tournament. And we'll go on to face Will Ospreay in the future. An 87, a new match of the night. And an 88 from Ricky Knight Jr. And whoa, Ricky Knight Jr. got the win. Hold on a second. Whoa, <laughs> I did not predict that in about that had superb wrestling our match of the night so far ricky knight jr does what not many thought he could he defeats drew galloway in just under 30 minutes not with the 450 but with the yakuza kick you know claymore versus yakuza and ricky knight jr prevailed and he has won the king's title tournament meaning that we will get will osprey versus ricky knight jr at some point down the line a 95 from drew galloway an 88 from ricky knight jr and they've got great chemistry which is amazing to see because we can run this back in the future i just want to prove 
I did not put any notes for this. I did not choose Ricky to win. I didn't choose Drew to win. I didn't choose anything. The game wanted Ricky to win. The game is a Ricky Knight Jr. stan. And this is not... I genuinely was like, oh, I kind of want Ricky to win, but it doesn't feel believable because Drew Galloway's Drew Galloway. Oh, I'll let the game decide. And then I was like, well, the game's just going to pick Drew, isn't it? But no. Ricky Knight Jr. is the new number one contender to or for the King's Championship. He could be a future king of LLW, something that I know some of you in the comments have been, you know, vying for. You know, when he dropped that Princess title, there was one or two comments that were like, that's fine, Ricky Knight Jr. can head in the King's title scene. And he's he's only gone and bloody done it. Wow. 87. Love that. I'm kind of mad that this isn't our main event because I don't think Ashton Smith's going to pull it out of his arse, is he? <laughs> but either way, Let's continue with the show. And we have a little backstage segment here where Fuego Fantasma explains uh, the reason for a new look, a new name, a new image, a kind of new everything. And he says that he realises after the fallout of the Anawai Alliance that the only person that he can rely on, the only person that he has to care for is himself. So why not carve out his own legacy? Why not? Why? Why? Did, why should he live in his father's name anymore he feels like he's disrespected his father with his actions against Chaz and with forming an alliance with Anna Wai. he feels like that he's made some wrong decisions as El Hijo del Fantasma and doesn't believe that he should carry his father's name I think it's his father so what he should do now is he needs to carve out his own legacy and maybe in the future there will be some El Hijo del Fuegos del, del Fuego Fantasmas but the, the time is now for Fuego Fantasma, for him to start new, to start fresh, and to win. So we have got Fuego Fantasma in LLW, you know, another, another little look, new look from uh, good old El Hijo del Fantasma, who's had a really interesting career in LLW. He's always been around, um, yeah, like, I, I really like him, um, and I'm excited to see where this goes. We haven't got enough masked wrestlers in uh, LLW uh, but I believe now I'm pretty sure it's main event time Pack Ashton Smith in a steel cage the only way to win is pinfall or submission there's no escaping this cage you can escape if you want but the match will continue outside of the ring but the plan is to stay in the cage you know what I mean uh, you guys know the story Pack has been forever teasing Ashton you know calling Ashton Ashton was the king of the Lariat League for years, literally. Um, when LLW was this tiny nobody business. But now we're one of the biggest companies in the world. We're easily the biggest company in Europe. Um, and we're competing with the likes of Ring of Honor, Impact Wrestling, CMLL, etc. Even Stardom. You know, we're competing with all of them um, for popularity and kind of just dominance in the wrestling market. We've brought in some incredible names, uh, you know, Drew Galloway, Joe Anawai. Uh, we've got Joshua Fatu on the books now. Um, some really important people have come and gone, you know, Tetsuya Naito, Hiroshi Tanahashi, uh, Kofi Mensah's here right now. Um, big, big names that you wouldn't dream of coming to. A little London company. Um, and Ashton Smith has been there since day one. Um, and I'd like to say he's grown with the company, but obviously everyone has their limit. And Pac has decided that Ashton has reached his limit. Um, which I think has only lit a fire in Ashton Smith. We've seen a new, a new, different, a darker Ashton Smith recently. A very cold um, and selfish Ashton. Which is the complete opposite of what we had back in the day. He was a man of the people. He was our face of the company. But now he is a far cry from that. And this has just all boiled down to Ashton wanting to one prove to himself that he can do it and it was that he wanted to prove to other people but now it's become an obsession he wants to just decimate pack he doesn't even care about the london's own title anymore he just wants to shut pack up and i think he was as he said last week he wants to start fresh he said his career's not over his career will begin again after llw riot so let's see if ashton smith can back up his words or is pack once again going to have the last laugh. Let's head straight into our main event match. A 75. Fine. Yeah, it's still good. 
it's still good. Uh, keep it's Ashton Smith. I mean, I hate to I hate I hate to say that, but it's Ashton Smith. But we did get superb wrestling and a great great match. Pack, however, did get the win in 26 minutes 27 seconds. Ashton Smith just didn't have enough in the locker. Ashton Smith, who is obviously this much colder, darker demeanor, does not have that sinister streak that he thought he had. You know, he tried it. You know, the weapons were out. They 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 brought a lot of chaos to this match. But Pac, as we know, is a brutal, sick individual when he wants to be. And it, that that was what tipped it over the edge. You know, there were there were hesitations and reservations from Ashton Smith, things that Pac doesn't do. Pack does not hesitate. He does not, you know, second guess his actions. And that is ultimately what made Ashton Smith lose this match. Pack took advantage of that. And with his 92 rated performance hit a stunning, I'm going to say stunning. I was going to say sinister. Stunning Black Arrow to get the win over Ashton's, a bloodied Ashton Smith to finish our show with a 75. I think this has been a pretty good show overall. I'm quite happy with this. I, I'm not too sure on the, the overall rating. Um, I'm thinking maybe 81, I'm going to predict. Uh, but before we do that, let's just talk more about this. I mean, where does Ashton Smith go now? He said that his career begins again after Riot. But after losing to Pac for, what, the fourth time now? Where does Ashton Smith go? I mean, we're going to have to wait and see. But I don't know. I don't know what happens with Ashton Smith. Makes me a little bit sad, you know. I love Ashton Smith. I spoke to him on Twitter a few a few um, months ago. Uh, it wasn't anything special. Just thought, you know, I'd let you know. I because um, I saw that he was going to be at, well, he was advertised to be at a wrestling show, uh, literally twenty minutes down the road from me, and he was on the poster. But then when I went to the website, um, they had like a roster of like sixty independent wrestlers. So I was like, does that guarantee that Ashton Smith's going to be there? Because he was like front and center on this poster. So I, I contacted them and said, hey, you know, I'm I'm like a, I, I'm on YouTube. I've got about a thousand subscribers. Would love to, like, obviously I'll pay for my own ticket, but I'd love to come and maybe speak with a few of the wrestlers that you have because a few of them are actually in a series that I'm doing. Like, I was really hoping that they, they didn't reply to me. So I just reached out to Ashton directly. Um, I messaged him on Instagram and I messaged him on Twitter. Uh, he didn't reply on Instagram, but he did reply on Twitter uh, to let me know that unfortunately he wasn't going to be at that show um, and he wasn't actually going to be any shows that are kind of local nearish to me, uh, which kind of sucked. Um, so I didn't go to the show in the end, but it would have been awesome to have met Ashton Smith. That would have been like a, like I know he's not, you know, a famous celebrity. Like you only really know Ashton Smith if you watch independent wrestling or you watched NXT UK for that brief moment, he was there. Outside of that, he's not a name that you'd go, oh, Ashton Smith wrestler. Um, but it would have been sick to have met him. Um, oh, well. But yeah, let's finish the show. Love Ashton Smith. God, I've got a soft spot for that guy. Um, we got an S79. Okay, not the best. I feel like if these two were swapped, because I took a risk with this, but I do think in real life, that's, that's a main event match. Um, we would have it, that would have been an 84 85 just by rearranging some of this uh, but let's just recap everything because we've got nothing else to do um, Anthony Agogo has earned a PWA title match and he gets to pick the stipulation uh, which is going to be very interesting to see what he chooses Madoka Kakuta oh, Osprey's also officially cleared he was cleared weeks ago but kayfabe just cleared now uh, Kakuta retains his Prince's title to continue that run uh, Colby Carino makes a surprise appearance and, and now him and Tyler Bates are our new Knights of the Lariat League, a very random tag team that I think could blossom into something special. Uh, Aisha Ray, with the help of Soraya Knight Jr., defeats the undefeatable May Sarah in a London Zone match for the Women's London Siren title. El Hijo del Fantasma is no more. It is now Fuego Fantasma. And he kicks off his new legacy with a win against Chaz Betts in a very good 85 rated match. We then continue that with a super strong match between Charlie Evans and Rini Yamashita, easily our two best women's wrestlers in the company, where Charlie Evans retains her Queen's title in the title rematch. Um, but that is kind of overshadowed by the return of Millie 
fucking Mackenzie. I'm so happy she's back. I was so devastated when she broke her neck. There was a part of me that wanted to just quit the game and re-record, but I also thought, realism, guys, come on, let's just like let's go it we have to go in fresh every time. We can't we can't be cheating the system. Um and then of course Osprey announces the finals where Ricky Knight Jr. pulls it out of the bag for a, one of our matches of the year um and defeats Drew Galloway in the tournament finals. Um, so it'll be Ricky Knight and Will Ospreay for that King's title at some point down the line. And then finally, uh, the match we've just covered, Ashton Smith could not get it done. Pack is on top and uh, we're not going to hear the end of it from Pack, are we? Um, but where does Ashton Smith go? Who knows? Let's make a speech. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to hug Ash Ashton Smith. Um, I think he needs it. Um, Ricky Knight Jr. needs to be praised for a great performance and uh, I think we'll give Fuego Fantasma uh, praise for a great performance as well. Actually let's swap these because I do want um, it to end on our boy because I do love him and you all love him, we all love him. Give him a hug, there we go. So Fuego is pleased, Ricky Knight Jr. is pleased Ashton Smith seems pleased. You can't really tell by that face, but we're going to end it on this beautiful man. We've ended many shows with this man. Um, unlucky Ashton. Sucks for you. Um, what happens next? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but that is it for LLW Presents Riot. I really hope you enjoyed this show. I really enjoyed booking it and booking up to it. Um, yeah, there's not much else to say, is there? I guess um, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching all the videos. Um, it has and always is a pleasure to do these videos and to see your reactions and comments. Um, I appreciate every comment, uh, whether it's positive, negative, or just a comment. Um, yeah, I guess um, guess that's it. If you want to, like, comment, subscribe, you know, the usual. You don't have to. Um, just watching it is enough for me. Um, because I really don't, you know, this isn't a full-time job. This is a hobby. This is a side ting. A side ting. Yeah, I regret saying that immediately. But uh, once again, thank you guys. And uh, yeah, goodbye.